Good evening and welcome to the WDSU News Hot Seat. I'm Travers Mackle. We continue our New Orleans City Council District debates up tonight. District D. Incumbent Councilman Jared Brossett, a Democrat, is seeking re-election. A former state representative, Brossett was first elected in 2014 and chairs the Transportation Committee on the Council. His opponent, Joel Jackson, also a Democrat, is a resident of the 7th Ward and is seeking elected office for the first time. Thank you all both for being here. Thank you, Trevor. District D is a large landmass district which includes all of Lake Vista and the lakefront, UNO, all of Gentilly, the seventh ward, parts of New Orleans East, the upper ninth ward, and parts of Treme. We are going to begin with a brief opening statement. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bruss, since you're the incumbent, you have 30 seconds to make an opening statement. Uh, thank you, Travis. I've probably represented District D, uh, one of the largest, most diverse districts on the city council uh, since being elected in 2014. At the beginning of my term, I realized that few things envisioned within City Hall would be realized without community uh, engagement. And thus, uh, with their help, I made and prioritized my legislation to make critical investments into public safety, economic opportunity, economic development, uh, transportation, uh, blight eradication, quality of life investments. <clears throat> Mr. Jackson, you have 30 seconds before we get to questions to make an opening statement. Yes, as well. sir. I'm Joel Jackson running for District D. Um, I'm not a politician. That might be evident tonight. It's my first time on television. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, and thank you, Jared. Um, I'm running out of civic responsibility and duty. I just want to be a part of it. You said community engagement before. And it's because of community engagement. I, I'm, a, I'm a citizen of New Orleans, a neighbor of District D, and I'm going around talking to folks in District D about what their issues are. And I'm running on the people's issues, not my resume. All right, thank you, Mr. Jackson. Let's talk storm and flood protection, the chaos at the Sewage and Water Board. Mr. Brussett, mm -hmm. we're going to start with you. If reelected, how will you work to make sure all storm drains are clean and all pumps are working? Basically, how will you hold the Sewage and Water Board accountable? You have two minutes to answer that question. Well, thank you, Travis. Uh, it's clear, it's becoming more clear today that we have uh, big issues over at Sewage and Water Board. Uh, we have appropriated uh, the money for catch basins. Uh, you saw the dismissal of Colonel Jernigan. Uh, we, as the legislative branch, will uh, hold the administration accountable, and we want them to uh, execute. Uh, we are finding out about new problems every day, but it's uh, it's incumbent upon us to hold their feet to the fire, the administration, uh, including this outgoing administration, uh, in the next to make sure that the public is aware of the uh, the uh, the assessments of the what would will be the action uh, after action report, uh, and then we go from there to inform the public on how much is this going to cost and how we go about maintaining uh, and stabilizing the system so this doesn't happen in the future. Mr. Jackson, a similar question once again dealing with the embattled sewage and water board. Do council members need to be placed back on the sewage and water board, and if elected? How will you work to implement your answer? You have two minutes. Yes, I think they should. I mean, I think we have to build consist consensus in the city council and work with the mayor's office. Um, the inspector general has come out very strongly on this issue in terms of the fact that the sewage and water board has so much money and so little oversight has led to fraud and corruption. And so I, I, I believe as, as a city council person, we have to sit down in the chamber and talk about, okay, how do we, I know that there's it's an arduous process for the state to get it done, but uh, start from start back over from scratch because we we used to have that kind of oversight. I think we need to get back there. Here's another sewage and water board question. It's a yes or no question. We're going to start with you, Mr. Jackson, and then go with you, Mr. Brossett. Was the mayor right to clean house at the sewage and water board, or was he using that body essentially as a scapegoat? Yes or no. We'll start with you. Yes, he was right. How about you, Mr. Brossett? Uh, yes, uh, within his authority, he was right, and I, I do think that uh, more uh, needs to happen wherever the breakdown in communication 
fail, whether it was Sewage and Water Board or the mayor's office. All right, we're going to start this next question with you. Crime, obviously, not just the biggest concern for your district, really the number one issue in the city of New Orleans facing residents right now. How does the city go from advertising to actually hiring and retaining more NOPD officers? Mr. Brassett, that question is for you, and you have two minutes to answer it. Thank you. Uh, during my first term, Travis, I uh, implemented a 15% pay raise, uh, and I am supporting another 10% pay raise as uh, the announcement in the summertime about expanding um, uh, the, uh, the the classifications of having a detective tract as well as a um, a uh, four hour season offices, uh, so they we could improve on our retainment rates and our recruitment. Uh, we want to make sure that our NOPD officers have the necessary resources uh, to live uh, live throughout the city and uh, because they are our families as well uh, and I want to make sure that uh, as we have done the last three years of budgeting that we invest in the best technology uh, so our offices uh, can get uh, and track the necessary uh, violent criminals and get them off the street. All right, next question for you, Mr. Jackson, also deals with crime. The 5th Precinct and the 3rd Precinct both cover parts of District D. Are they properly staffed with officers? And is it important for the department to properly staff those precincts that play such a big role in District D? You have two minutes to answer that question. Yes, I think so. I think we need more staffing. But more than more staffing, I think we need better vetting, better training, and better pay, as Jared was saying. And the vetting is extremely important to me because I want to know why do you want to be a police officer? You know, are there, are, do you have any kind of bias going into the job, right? And then let's train people better on issues in our community, right? Um, and then that kind of leads to criminal justice reform. I think if you want to take down crime, then you have to reform the criminal justice system. We're the most incarcerated city in the world. And there's a lot of money that the city is paying to OPP before before uh, people that have been arrested get uh, convicted, and that's on the city's dime. Let's put that money, let's arrest less people and train better police officers and put more on the street and make it a safer community. Well, this question, we're gonna start with you. It still, deal, still deals sure. with the topic of crime. There are several unsolved homicides in District D right now, including the murder of a mother and her three children and the death of a transgender person. Does homicide have to make more arrest in the city of New Orleans. Absolutely, I think there should be a tier of how we police. I think we have too many police officers on the street of New Orleans who are turning our citizens into ATMs in terms of finding uh, traffic cameras is a different thing. But I think we need to, our, our homicide officers uh, should not be doing anything else. And I believe that sometimes our priorities are off. And in fact, I was listening to someone just last night uh, who's a mayoral candidate, uh, Byron Cole, and he had an anecdote about uh, a shooting that had just happened in his neighborhood and the police officers rolled up and asked some elderly folks to identify the perps and they were scared to do it. It wasn't the right setting. It's not just are we making hom homicide crimes a priority? It's how are we dealing with it? We got we to change the process. Mr. Brassett, very similar question dealing with the NOPD and homicide. Does that unit need more officers and mm -hmm. what can they do and what can you do as a council member to mm -hmm. get people to cooperate more with the NOPD's homicide unit? I think uh, the homicide detective unit uh, is expanding. Uh, I believe that we have to have a priority and a focus on solving crime Crimes. Uh, this is why, as a member of the council and the budget committee, I've invested in increasing um, pay raises, uh, increased funding for the 911 call center, uh, as well as just this past week, we have a new training academy, millions of dollars in a new training academy at the third district on Paris Avenue, and a new re newly renovated 
uh, NOPD, uh, NOPD station. Uh, we have to uh, continue to develop a relationship, uh, community policing, so people will come forward in all the way through prosecution, even with the district attorney, uh, have a rapport with the police officers. Back in uh, two years ago, I authored legislation for COPS grant with the federal government, uh, $1.85 million that we successfully got. Thank you, Mr. Brussel. We're going to start this question with you. It's a yes or no question. Mm -hmm. Last year, you voted in favor of the removal of the four Confederate era monuments. Do you support the idea by some groups in the city to discuss the removal of more monuments? Yes or no? Uh, I voted. I voted yes to remove the monuments and I'm ready to look into the future. So I would say uh, no, not at this time. How about you, Mr. Jackson? Uh, yes or in no? In favor of removing more? In, or, or in favor of the discussion to remove more? I'm in favor of moving more. Um, I think it, let's start with Albert Pike and let's look at Jeff Davis and let's look at it, this, let's look at street names and let's look at memorializing the people in our history that have made positive contributions to our community. Here's another yes or no one. We're going to start with you, Mr. Okay. Jackson. Yes or no, do you support the red light traffic and speed cameras in the city of New no. Orleans? No. I mean, that's what I'm running on. VoteJoelJackson.com. You'll see it. It's right there. How about you, Mr. Brossette? Do you support, yes or no, the red light traffic and speed cameras in the city? I support them throughout the school uh, safety zones and crosswalks. Uh, so our children can be safe going to and from school. We're going to start this question with you, Mr. Brassett. You have one minute to answer this one. Last year, the city council slashed funding for the district attorney. Should that money be restored? And can the council restore that money if you're reelected? The council uh, has the authority to reallocate funds. Uh, we have uh, invested uh, a lot of money into the DA's office, and I want to continue to see some programs uh, that uh, the Emergence and uh, uh, domestic violence uh, continued. Uh, the, uh, however, the DA does have a uh, judgment uh, that has been handed down, and we have to decide together how will that affect uh, the budget moving forward. Mr. Jackson, similar question dealing with funding for law enforcement. Does the city council give the public defender's office enough money, and if elected, would you give them more money for the public defender? You have one minute to answer that as well. I think no and yes. So the, the question is, where do you get that money? You know, and again, I think if we stop uh, over incarcerating people, there will be more money freed up and less time that the public defender's office needs. We have to stop sending young people to jail for misdemeanors. We have to stop IDing to jail. You report a crime, we were talking about that before, you report a crime, they run your ID and you might go to the, to the OPP for uh, a minor offense, misdemeanor, or a traffic violation. And if we stop using our resources in that way, we'll have more money for the public defender's office. We're gonna start with you for this question, Mr. Jackson. It's a 30 second answer. Okay. It deals with short term rentals, Airbnb. It's a big topic in District D. Do the city's new laws have enough teeth and does more have to be done for the city to enforce these laws? I mean, it has a tooth, but it needs teeth, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's a good first step. I, I think, you know, in terms of you can't do your whole house mm -hmm. for weeks at a time or months at a time. We have to stop developers coming in, buying up all of our homes, like in the Treme, and just using them specifically for short-term rentals. So we've got to treat it, we got to regulate it. And that's what the government's for. People don't like talking about regulation, we got to regulate it. Mm -hmm. And we have to tax it like it's a hotel. Mr. Brassett, mm -hmm. for the first time, same question. Does the city have enough teeth in its new laws when it deals with Airbnb and short-term rentals? It's a really big issue in your district. Right. I don't think so. Uh, it doesn't go far enough. That's why I was one of the few that voted no on short-term rentals, uh, because I want to protect the integrity of our neighborhoods. Uh, now the regulation has thus uh, passed. I want to work with uh, this administration and the next administration to get more teeth into the ordinance, because it's uh, pricing people out and it's exacerbating uh, and contributing to not having affordable housing. We're gonna start this question with you. It's a really easy one, a quick one. Give mm -hmm. the current mayor, Mitch Landrieu, and his administration a letter grade. If you are a teacher, A, B, C, D, or F, a quick answer and a quick explanation. We're gonna start mm -hmm. with you, Mr. Brussett. 
you know, I would say uh, I've worked well with this administration. I will work well with the next administration. Uh, I definitely have to say, in light of the uh, infrastructure problems, uh, sewage and water board that we're learning about more and more, I would just I would have to say it's uh, incomplete. But I'll I'll continue to work with uh, the administration and the next. All right. To how, about, how about you, Mr. Jackson? A quick letter grade and a yeah. quick explanation of this current Landry administration. I give it a B minus, and the reason I go higher is because a lot of the social justice issues. Um, but he's also overtaxed, his administration has overtaxed our work, working class citizens with ordinance fees and fines and the traffic cameras. And we're just, we're making up for shortfalls in our budget with this administration um, through over 2% of the budgets coming from these traffic cameras, right? So I feel like uh, that's why I give them a B minus instead of a a. Really quickly, final question before we do closing remarks. 30 seconds. We're going to start this one with you, Mr. Jackson. Sure. If you're elected, what is the first thing you do if elected for the people of District D? You have 30 seconds. That's a great question. Uh, I mean, really, the first thing I'm going to get into is criminal justice reform. You know, um, and, and I've got, I, I'm a quick study, but I got a lot to learn. But that's, you know, one specific thing is to. If we could pass legislation so you don't get ID'd when you call in a crime, I would love to do that. That would be a first thing. Let's make people not afraid to call the police because people are afraid in my district to call the police, even if they've done no wrong. Mr. Brossett, really quickly, 30 seconds. If you're reelected as the councilman for District D, what's your first course of action day one? I want to increase economic opportunity. Uh, that's why in this first term, I offered, authored and passed legislation to create the first living wage ordinance uh, in the city of New Orleans' history. Uh, $10.55 uh, an hour contractors, employees, as well as seven days paid sick leave. I want to continue to improve public safety and see through it the $2.4 billion settlement that I helped push uh, visiting with our D.C. delegation for the improvement of infrastructure and subsurface drainage. As we wrap up here, we're going to have closing remarks. You each have about 45 seconds for closing mm -hmm. remarks. Because you're the incumbent, Mr. <laughs> Brassett, we're going to let you finish last. So we're going to start with you, Mr. Jackson. 45 seconds for closing, closing statements. Remarks. Closing statement. Thank you uh, for having me. Again, it's uh, Joel Jackson, District D. Vote JoelJackson.com if you want to see my platform. Appreciate the time. Um, Again, I said I'm not a politician, but I have a, I don't have a policy record, but I have a point of view. I've noticed that a lot of folks, I wouldn't say this about Jared, but a lot of folks who are running for office tend to think that the most important issues are what their resume says about what they have accomplished, as opposed to what they're hearing from their neighbors. So I want to engage in my community, find out what the issues are, which is what I've been doing during my ca campaign. And those issues are the traffic cameras, criminal justice reform, and a, a living minimum wage. And I, I support Step Up Louisiana and it's $15 an hour minimum, and I think in the hospitality industry, it should be $17.50. Thank you. We appreciate it, Mr. <clears throat> Jackson. Mr. Bruss, that's ensure the incumbent. You have the final closing <clears throat> remark here. 45 seconds for a closing statement. Thank you. It's truly been a privilege uh, and honor to serve and represent the citizens of New Orleans interests uh, and District D on the New Orleans City Council, and I humbly ask for your support uh, in running for re-election on October 14, 2017. Uh, as I continue to represent District D, uh, I promise to represent and legislate uh, with the strong leadership that um, my citizens have uh, come to expect. And I want to continue uh, serving and I will uh, work to make a better District D and a better New Orleans. All right. Thank you very much. Jared Brossett, Joel Jackson, we appreciate your Thanks, time. Jarvis. That is all thank the time you. we have for the hot seat. That was the District D debate next week. District E.